A very warm welcome to all of our viewers who are joining us from all across Kenya and the world. We'd like to welcome you to, the, to this week's episode of The Train Show. I am your host, Yvonne Sure. So last time we were talking about mentorship, we were talking about career training, and today we have brought somebody who is in the publishing industry. I know we've taken a big leap. But the benefit of going across these different industries so that we can get insight in what they do, how they work, and how even you as our viewers can benefit from the information that we receive. So today we have a very lovely guest with us. Her name is Miss Caroline. I'll not say her second name yet. <laughs> so Miss Caroline has been or was a teacher at Alliance Boys High School some time way back. And right now she is in publishing. So before she got into Longhorn Publishers, she was in Oxford uh, Printing Press. She also worked with Pearson as a content development specialist. And you see, even with this background she has, she is definitely the person you're looking for if you're planning to get into uh, writing and you want to be a published author. So I'd like her to at least introduce herself, Kidogo, to just a bit, give us a bit of insight into who she is, and then we can progress with the show. So keep watching, and Miss Caroline. At least sasa naweza sema jina yako ya pili gatwiri na tuseme hata ya tatu weloba thank you thank you so much for having me here it's a pleasure even and uh, i'm excited that you actually invited me to come and share with you the little knowledge i have about this uh, publishing industry mm. uh, yes i am a teacher by profession and as you said yes i started my career at uh, alliance high school and um, moved on to uh, Oxford University Press, where I was for yeah about ten years, and after that I went to Pearson Education, uh, and I, as a content development specialist. From there I went to Longhorn, where I currently am. I'm I currently heading the publishing uh, services department, so I'm the publishing services lead as we speak for long on uh, publishers. Yeah, so that has been my short journey, uh, or journey career in publishing. Okay, so I really don't think that's a short journey <laughs> because it has carried years, but much to see get into that because um, with something that you said that you are the lead at Longhorn, so what exactly does your work entail at Longhorn as a publisher or as a publishing lead? I, as a, I, maybe I'll talk a little bit about the, uh, some little background about publishing services and uh, the department I hand at uh, Longhorn Publishers. Uh, the company saw the need to address a gap that was in the industry. Because uh, we know the mainstream publishers always have a, like a set of a, a publications that they want to do in a particular year for one reason or another. And it's not always that everybody finds their fit into this uh, mainstream, pub, uh, mainstream publishing. And so there was a gap because there are so many people who want to be published and for one reason or another, they cannot be published. I think if I can cite an example, which I probably a few of my audiences may know, is the, I don't know if you've heard of Harry Potter. Uh, the Harry, Harry Potter, Potter, the yes. series, yes, yes the and series. the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the movies very well known. Yes, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, Rollins, J.K. Rollins, the author, was rejected in 25 publishing houses. Yeah. and. Until uh, one day somebody saw the manuscript and decided, yes, we can give it a try. We can try and publish you. And look at her today. Her reporter is really a big name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, for that reason and many others, we saw that there's an opportunity that we need to help many people to be able to uh, put their works into the public. Yeah, because. Uh, well, you may think that it is not good enough, but if you believe in your product, 
then you're saying that at uh, Long on Publishers, we are saying that we believe in you as well. Yeah, and uh, we want to give an opportunity to people who are willing, who really believe and trust in themselves to be able to publish their works. Yeah, and hence we have the publishing services department of Long on, of, uh, Long on Publishers. Okay, and that's very interesting because even what I've picked up in particular is that you want to help those authors who have not been able to get an audience with a publisher and probably they've been rejected and they need somewhere where they can entrust their work to you. So when you're looking into publishing authors mm -hmm. or for people who are looking into being published authors, mm -hmm. what's the kind of criteria you have? Uh, for the publishing services, we really don't have so much of a stringent criteria because here we're looking at a, a dream that probably you have. You have a dream of a senior publication and uh, you believe in it. And because you believe in it, we want to tell you that it is possible. Uh, so what, you're, what we are offering is that once you bring your manuscript, we'll assess it and we'll advise you uh, from a professional point of view. We'll take you through and all the processes that your work needs to go through. And then you make a decision and say, yes, I have understood my, my, work, my work is at this level. Uh, because I think when most people write, they really, uh, they know yes what they want to write, but they are not very conversant with the best way to present their work to the public so that it can be also meaningful uh, to whoever is reading, you know. Because you might read, uh, um, you might write your work and uh, you want it published, but then you don't know about so much about the layout, about how the book is supposed to be, uh, probably the cover that you're supposed to have, or uh, how it's supposed to be edited uh, to meet the needs of your audience. So that is where we come in, and uh, we know that yes, you can, there are many people who are doing uh, self-publishing. They write their works and they take them to uh, maybe someone who is able to print their work uh, without necessarily going through the processes of uh, being looked at, reviewed, and then you're told that your work is good or you need to improve on this area or the other. And because of that, you end up with quite some very good uh, content, but then it has a few errors here and there. And when your audience sees your book and it has these uh, glaring errors, according to the audience, which according to you, because man is to error, you did not see it. And yes, it was a good work, but probably you are not uh, looking at it from an editor's point of view and some things just passed and you went ahead and printed it because you wanted to do your own self-publishing. So what is going to happen is that in your subsequent work, if you really have an ambition to become a renowned author, you'll always be judged by your past. And people, your audience will read the work and say that, you know what, I think this work, um, this author is not serious with what they're doing because they certain probably one or two errors. And that's where we come in now and are saying, yes, you want to do your work, but we come in and help you because we can take you through all the processes that you have gotten and you've gone to any other established or renowned uh, publishing firm, you'll get it or the processes that any other book goes through will give you the services. Yeah, so that's what we do at a, a Long On Publishers, the Department of Publishing Services. Okay, okay. And interesting enough, I even wanted to know something or a little bit about uh, what you do uh, for those authors who decide to self-publish mm -hmm. or how you assist them. Mm -hmm. And you have gone right ahead and tapped into that. So thank you that, for that. Um, <coughs> sorry, something I'd like to know also apart from self-publishing and uh, what exactly you do at Longhorn, mm -hmm. there has been a change in terms of how people read their books these mm -hmm. days. You can have um, an audio book, mm -hmm. you can have an e-book. Mm -hmm. And I know publishing uh, majors in printing. Mm -hmm. So how have you been able to transition and also 
tap into new technologies yeah. so that you can be able to keep up with the changes that are happening um, in terms of this industry. Yeah, I think um, just like every other industry, um, publishing is not immune to change. So there's, there's always change. Things are changing. The way we did things a long time ago is no longer the same. I remember personally when I joined publishing, uh, we used to take films to press. I, I, I don't know if, you, if you're of the generation uh, where <laughs> the, the, those cameras and you take photos and the photographer tells you, uh, we have the negatives and so you're waiting for the negative to be developed and it takes you uh, like a whole week waiting for the photographer to go to the studio, have the negative developed. Yes, that is where uh, printing or publishing was. When I joined publishing, there were those films that I don't know whether you can relate to them. I, well, I was not born in that era, yes. but I do remember them because even when I was growing up, photos are still taken the same way. Yes. So you'd have to wait for the film. Yes, you'd have to wait for the film. Yes, but now things have changed. So today you uh, write your work and you just need to send it on email or whatever format or that you want. And it is with the printer and it can be printed within no time. So those, those, that's just one of the examples of the changes that uh, the publishing industry has done to go through. And we are embracing it. When you talk about technology, that is also another change that is coming. And we know that, especially now, like where with the rise of corona, we know there was a lot of shift from the print works, right from uh, newspapers. People can all read or wanted to read online. You don't want to handle the, the actual you know, uh, printed paper. You want to read the, on your phone. And because, again, there's less contact, I don't know, maybe from the sellers, from the vendors, right? Uh, from the production. So uh, because of that, we've seen a shift into people wanting to read more or embracing the reading on their phones or on any electronic devices. And uh, that is a change I think that everyone in publishing is embracing or eventually will embrace. Mm -hmm. I think if you've uh, heard about even uh, the current changes in our current uh, education system. We are now moving from the 844 to competency-based curriculum. Exactly. And one of the things that the curriculum is emphasizing is digital literacy, because that is where the world is going, you know. So even with the publishing industry, we cannot run away from that, uh, because uh, technology is here to stay with us. It is the future. And so what we are doing uh, I believe uh, most publishers don't agree with me, is that we are embracing, yes, that uh, publishing uh, on online and availing books online. Um, I think there are many ways in which you can avail the books uh, online. Uh, there are many channels where you can actually sell uh, your books if you want to publish and sell online. And not only for the mainstream books, even, even if you do yourself publishing, there are many avenues where you can always uh, sell yourself to the wider, a bigger, maybe audience. And when I talk about digital, the beauty about it is that we are not only limited to our space, uh, space being our country or our region or our continent. Uh, once you let it out there, uh, thanks to technology, your book can be read by anyone in the world. And uh, yeah, it's a shift that I think we have to embrace. We can't run away from it. Yeah. OK. So growing up, I have come across, or some of us have come across books that have been published by Longhorn publishers. But I'm not sure I have seen books that have been published that are not education-based. So which are some of the uh, authors who you're supporting that are away from, um, that are writers away from education-based um, content or education-based writing? Well, uh, there are quite a number of people there. You may probably not know them. And uh, yes, there are very many people who are interested in publishing themselves and having their works out there. And probably I will not answer your question the way you would like me to answer. <laughs> what I will tell you is that that is exactly what we want to address. 
the okay. fact that yes, what we've seen in the past is a lot of school books, a lot of books that um, that are meant to be read by learners, be they course books or maybe readers, story books, maybe reference books. And we're saying that no, that is exactly the trend that we want to change. We want to move away from now just having the content that is only read to schools or in schools to content that any layman can read, any person can read. Uh, and we are talking of maybe your own autobiographies. Uh, we have seen memoirs. You've seen people write about their professional, maybe their professional works, maybe something that they feel uh, the history of something that is probably not known to anyone, but it's known maybe in their society, the history of their societies. And we're saying, yes, these are opportunities that we are offering you. If you really feel passionate that you can write uh, anything, even document the history of your, let's even the history of your community. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've not seen such kinds of literature. Exactly. Yeah, because we've not also seen people interested in writing or probably they're interested, but for some one reason or another, they cannot be published. Maybe yeah. because uh, the community they, it's too small, maybe the people who will buy are very few. But if you really believe in your product, then I believe there's an audience for you. And that's, that is what we are saying, that we are giving an opportunity to anybody who wants to publish and not necessarily even limiting, limiting to publications of books or anything, even if you want to do journals, you want to do uh, magazines, and maybe it's a company, and they want to, uh, to probably just publish their, their what, their uh, summary report, maybe reports, their yearly reports. Maybe you uh, are a student. Mm -hmm. I want to believe you've been a student at the university, and you want to publish your thesis. You've done a lot of research and you want to publish it. So how do you, uh, do you have a solution? Can you go work to maybe any renowned publishing firm and tell them that I have this, this is that I want to, uh, to be published? And we are saying yes, or we want to say yes, we can publish, we can help you get your one out in there. Yeah, so um, I think uh, I would like to say that when it comes to publishing services, uh, it's really not about just getting your book out there. It's any service that you may want. Probably you just want, your book is good, you just want it designed and printed, or you want uh, probably just uh, all the services. Yeah, so that's the same reason, or back to what you said, we want to see more works, more people published. Uh, we want to read from Yvonne. Yeah, because I believe Hopefully. you have something. <laughs> yes, because because your your ideas matter. Your ideas matter. They they really do matter. Whatever it is that you have, whatever it is that you thinking in your mind, it does matter. And if it matters to you, then we believe it matters to other people. Just believe in yourself, and yeah, we are there to make your dream come true. Yeah, I believe you do. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, so far we have had a lovely session and my takeaway thus far, if you believe in yourself, then Longhorn wants to believe in you too. So wherever you are and you want to be a published author, you have, your mind is just rushing, you have ideas, you have so much that you want to put on paper or even on audio or even on an e-book. Longhorn is saying that they are ready to accommodate you. So we will be taking a very short break and we'll be right back. Do remember that this show has been brought to you courtesy of Fortech Global Solutions. Also, even as we take a break, do continue liking, do share, comment, engage with us so that we can be able to get feedback from you. And also keep watching the show. So we'll be right back.
Welcome back our viewers. We have had a lovely first session and we've just had some wise words. Hey, nataka tu kuzirudia briefly, briefly. If you can think it, then it can be. Hey, yeah, Miss Carolina, she's making sure that here we are having more than enough content for you and we are keeping you updated. And definitely, if you're still with us, do keep liking, subscribe to our channel, comment, engage with us. And yes, so even as we continue with the show, I'd like to know, and I hope you will also like to know. So Miss Caroline, in terms of publishing, an author has come up on a rough idea. They have, you, as you, they want to submit their manuscript and probably they have approached other publishers or they have never even thought about approaching other publishers. So how do you assist them? Are your services accessible to writers who are just starting out and probably they are not looking into publishing a lot of copies? Like this is where they are starting from. So how are you able to assist them? I thank you very much Yvonne for that question. And uh, yes, I'll pick on what you, st you started with. Uh, what I said is that if you can think it, then it can be. And uh, so we are saying that there's no idea that is too small or no person that is too small. Because uh, I have seen children who are interested in writing and uh, through my publishing uh, career, I've uh, always been uh, wanting to understand the children's perspective we always decide what is good for them. We always think that uh, this book won't be good for you. What about a child? If they were to write, what would they want to write about? And uh, as we speak, yes, um, we have uh, children who are writers and who are interested in publishing. And the answer to your question is that, yes, we can publish anyone. Anybody, for that case, I mean anybody. You don't have to be maybe a renowned author for you to submit your work and for us to think that, yes, this is work that we can publish. And what you're saying is that once you submit your ideas, we will guide you, we'll work with you, and we'll let you know the strengths and the weaknesses of your work. Because again, uh, we don't want you to go out and there and then you put your, uh, what you think is your best foot forward, but then it's not uh, good enough to the public. So what you're saying or what we do uh, at Longhorn is that we guide you. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you've written. What I said is that just believe in your work. Maybe you, you think you're, you only have an audience of five people. <laughs> and uh, as I said, if you can think it, then it can be. So. If you want to uh, publish and print only five copies, is that possible? I'm sure that's what you you would want me yes. to, uh, <laughs> to comment on that. And I'm telling you, yes. So what you need to do is that uh, I'm sure there are many avenues. We we have so many avenues mm -hmm. in which you can you can uh, let out your one copy, your ten copies, the number of copies that you want to get out. Yeah, the avenues, and we we'll work with you and. Once you give us your manuscript, we don't say that this is not good enough. We advise you and we tell you that, yes, this is your work. Uh, you want us to publish it for you. And you're willing to uh, uh, maybe uh, go all the way uh, into publishing and ensuring that your book is there. So we'll tell you what do you need to change. Uh, do you want to change the content, the way you structure, the way you organized it, the editing, or do you just want your book uh, to be the way it is? So ours is to offer you professional advice that you can get from any publishing firm. That's professional advice that you can get. Uh, maybe if you take your book to any other publisher, you'll get the same professional service if they're publishing it and uh, marketing, marketing it for you. And so the service you're offering is more of advisory, more of the actual doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll do the editing for you. We'll do all the work that you need uh, to be done in your book. Of course, with a professional advice. 
Yeah, and of course with your input and your willingness to also effect the corrections that are given to you. Okay. Yeah. And does this include marketing um, in terms of even after the book is published? <coughs> Sorry. I have also seen that when it comes to maybe international, internationally, uh, there are authors who have campaigns, they have book readings, they have um, the kind of marketing which not only after they have been able to publish their book, that they can also have it sell and they can gain some profit both for the publisher and um, the author. Do you also, does that, do your services include marketing for books that uh, have been published? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, yes, we support our authors or anyone who is willing to work with us in quite a number of ways. And uh, yeah, those are some of the ways that we support our others. Yeah, so uh, as much as we are offering the services, um, we believe that we have the knowledge to be able to take you to the next level. And uh, I don't think it would be prudent for us to have the knowledge and not be able to help you because it's of no use to mm -hmm. us if we keep it to ourselves. Yes, we have many ways in which we can we support our others to ensure that they actually reach the market they're targeting and probably even surpass, you never know. Because uh, I, I think the limitations we put are in our minds. But once the book is open there, it's like it gains its own life. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably you might bring out a book and you're thinking maybe this is my audience. But when it gets out there, it turns out to be a very big, maybe market. The audience is too big. So uh, we support the authors to get these channels, to get to be where they want to be with their products, uh, and to advise them on the best way in which they can position uh, the works so that the public knows because again once once you publish a book or any publication that you do it depends on whatever it is that you want to use it for do you want to sell it to schools do you want to sell it to the general public is it something for your own consumption like maybe probably it's a report for let's say a real university mm -hmm. you know probably you want it for the university itself maybe you want just to keep the history of Riara the, from the time it was started to where it is today, and you want to give this to the new students that are joining. You know, so it's up to you to really tell us uh, my work, whatever it is that I, the service that I want, the end product that we are going to get, uh, because I, I, I would like to refer to it as the end product, because it's not necessarily a book. It can be a journal. And you know, like with journals, maybe you're only targeting professionals in a mm -hmm. particular field. You're not targeting uh, the, uh, the general uh, mass. And probably, like I've said with the real life, you want me pro probably to do an historical book about real university. Uh, then again, your target is probably the students, mm -hmm. or probably um, maybe a prospective students who may, you may want to attract. Mm -hmm. And you want to probably uh, let the schools know about Riara through that. So it's up to you to tell us who you're targeting and who your audience is. And then it is our responsibility to advise you on the best way to get it, uh, to get the maximum market that you can get. Yes. Okay. And that is wonderful. COVID was a very big hit for different industries and I'm guessing people were able to come up with new talents, they got new talents, they started doing things that they did not do on a normal day. So how did COVID affect, um, how did COVID affect the publishing industry or how are you able to rise up to the challenge? when you discovered that, oh, by the way, this thing has hit us and now we need to actually look into yeah, being able to get through this trying time. Yeah, 
Thank you, thank you, Yvonne, for the question. And uh, yeah, that, that's a very uh, pertinent question because it touches on matters of uh, uh, business. And I think it's not just in publishing. Every other industry went through the phase or the received the bouts of COVID and we saw the slow of business almost everywhere in the world. And uh, I think publishing was not immune to that. However, uh, there was a new turn because uh, I, I think with changes, any change that or any trauma, if you go through a trauma, it never leaves you the same. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you just scratch yourself, you it will heal, but you'll be left with a small scar. You know? Remember, I was scratched. Too. Yes, and uh, if you if you break a bone, which is a more serious, uh, a, a probably uh, accident, and it heals, I think. Uh, doctors might tell us that that could be the strongest part of your body of your, or your bone because it has healed that it is much stronger than it was. And so with the COVID, I look at it as in the way it has made the publishing industry evolve. After, uh, after the no COVID, are we still doing business the same way we used to do? Is everything back to normal the way it used to be? Uh, probably not. But then there are other new things that have come up. Because what you've seen is that uh, during COVID, there was a lot of uh, uh, reliance on technology for about everything. I think the entertainment industry must have uh, seen a lot of rise in demand for maybe content that they can keep their, uh, the people, the audiences engaged in because that time people are not going to work, many people are not going to work, they're working from home. Children are at home. What do you do with them? You can't give them cartoons from morning to morning. True. Yeah, so it was a wake-up call for the publishing industry because there was an opportunity for the industry not to come up with content that can keep the learners engaged at home mm -hmm. and to avail them digitally, to avail them maybe on the, on the phones. That was the easiest way and uh, or maybe in any other formats that could be sent digitally. Yeah, so after COVID, that has not stopped. And so we're seeing a shift into more of digital content being developed mm -hmm. and more of perfecting the art of developing this digital content. And even as we move into uh, people who are interested in self-publishing. We've seen actually a rise in the number of teachers who actually discovered they couldn't do a lot of revision work for their learners. Mm -hmm. And now they want it published or they want it uh, maybe to be digitized, you know, because uh, again, you wanted initially there was that need to reach your students, for example, alone in probably in your school you wanted to reach maybe 40 students mm -hmm. uh, but now in the process of solving that problem of reaching 40 students you discover you could reach 400 mm -hmm. not just the 40 you could reach 40,000 mm -hmm. you know you could reach 4 million you know and so I look at it as a it has been a positive yes it was negative it slowed down everything but I think like even the uh, the snake, when it needs to shed its skin, I think it goes to some sort of hibernation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and once the skin is shed, it now comes out looking very uh, clean and fresh. So it's the same thing. We we step back, yes, to hibernate, but I think we know the publishing industry is coming out now, more vibrant, just like any other industry. I believe many industries are probably doing the same. Mm -hmm. They are coming out in a more vibrant way, and reinventing themselves and trying to see, yes, how can we do things better? There's a wake-up call. We need to embrace technology. How can we now embrace that technology and make it perfect? Yeah, so I think for me that has been the, uh, the turnaround uh, call or the turnaround in publishing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was really that bad. <laughs> it was, it, Eventually, you look at it and you're like, yeah, it was worth it. We've seen people who do not know their end writing talent. They know, know they, they have one time to discover. Maybe there are those who really wanted to write, but they never had the time. 
So they've now discovered that they have the time and they discover that they can write. Okay, yeah, wonderful. So it's positive. I think it's well. Are you offering any internship opportunities or do you have any um, particular uh, departments that you need uh, people to work there? Are you recruiting right now? And if you are, how can be people be able to access um, these points of where they can be recruited into the company or into the organization? Uh, thank you very much. I think that's a very uh, good question, especially to the youth and anyone who is looking out. And what I can say about it is that I, uh, if you look at any publishing firm, uh, what most of the work entails I think has to do with the teaching, it has to do with the journalism, it has to do with the publishing. And I know the universities that offer these courses. And so yes, from time to time, uh, long on, and I believe every other publishing service, recruits people who have gone through these courses. Yeah, personally, as I told you, my <laughs> background is teaching. Yes. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yes, it is. Uh, I, I believe if anyone is interested in any position, uh, nobody will come looking for you and tell you, Yvonne, you know what? I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for someone who who can do hosting. And you have not gone out to tell them I am looking for a position Definitely. to host. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the ball goes back to the court of the person looking. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think anyone is limited uh, from asking or stopped from asking for an opportunity anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you to make your personal decision and say that, well, Long On has been the company of my dream. I would like to try mm -hmm. and get and see, get my CV viewed by them and see what opportunities they may have. Because you will never know. You will never know if you're not looking or if you're not asking. Which and is very true. Yeah, and again, I think you lose nothing by asking for an opportunity for internship uh, or for a job opportunity. Mm -hmm. The worst you can get is be told that, okay, we don't have a position right now. And if that is the response, I don't think you lose anything because you didn't have it in the first place. What I'm saying is exactly. encourage you, encourage anyone who is looking, not just at long on, but for any opportunity, look out, go purposefully looking out for opportunities and you will get them. Because I believe not only long on, but every other company recruits from somewhere. Okay. So what I would like to say to the youth and anybody who's looking, please do not limit yourself. Do not wait for even the adverts to be put. Mm -hmm. Find out, approach whichever company it is that you want uh, to work with find out from them, ask them, do you have these opportunities? Okay. At times even present ideas to them and tell them, I know you deal with books, you deal with publishing. I have this great idea of what we can transform and you'll mm -hmm. never know what happens. Which yeah. is very true. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Look for those opportunities, my friends. What, what is your parting shot to our viewers? Hey. You have told us so much, but I'm sure Someone out there is learning. So what would you like to tell us even as we come to the end of the show? I, I think my ones are pretty simple. Uh, as a teacher, I believe in keeping it short and simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll tell you, your ideas matter. No matter what it is, as long as you believe in them, we will believe in you. But you have to believe in them yourself. Yes, and let's let the world limit you, but, or let, uh, yes, let, let the world be the one that's limiting, but do not limit yourself. Do not think that your idea is too small, because we believe that whatever it is that you're thinking, it matters. It matters to you, it will matter to someone else. Just give it a try, and give it your best shot, and give it your very best, yeah. Okay, very wonderful words as we come to the end of the show. And I hope you are keeping them in mind. 
<laughs> it has been wonderful having our guest here, Miss Caroline, and we hope to even have her for another session on another day. But for now, we'd like to say thank you for all those who've kept watching us and have been with us throughout the show. And even as we come to the end of the show, we want to thank you, those the team that has been behind what you are viewing today. So I want to thank our other host, Mr. Robert Hussein, who has been the producer, he has been the director, he has been the sound technician, of course with assistance from our studio assistant, who has been Stephen Corrier. So thank you to the both of them for making this show happen. And it has also been brought to you courtesy of Fortec Global Solutions. So I have been your host, Yvonne Soren. And next week we have something amazing lined up for you. As we said, this year we are hitting those goals and we are ensuring you that we are bringing you the best of the best. So thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to our pages and to our channels. And engage with us. Thank you and have a lovely time. Goodbye.